हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू फोर्टीन लेक्चर ऑफ ग्लोबल नेविगेशन सेटेलाइट सिस्टम्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द जीएनएसएस एरर्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स इनडायरेक्टली और डायरेक्टली समटाइम्स वी हैव टच्ड अपॉन अबाउट द एरर्स विच आर इन बट वेरी ब्रीफली बट इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डिस्कसन वी आर गोइंग टू हैव डिटेल डिस्कसन ऑन हाउ एरर्स आर इनकॉर्पोरेटेड how error comes into the our positioning estimations and how we can avoid those errors as well so gns as error sources uh, basically make uh, make it difficult for a gns as receiver to calculate an exact position and the, no matter how uh, you improve the system uh, there will be always errors and the the problem here is uh, that uh, we don't have anything a sort of standard to compare that how accurate am i uh, so only using gdop uh, concept or any other thing we we say that we are accurate to this range but uh, whatever the standard or reference which we are using that might also be having some errors so a, you know say absolute accuracy uh, probably we cannot achieve to and that extend as we want but uh, nonetheless uh, we are achieving a crisis nowadays up to millimeter by implying either differential gps or up to centimeter by sbas technique so let's look the sources of errors which are possible sources of errors and uh, let me uh, let me first mention here at the outset that it is not necessary that the all the errors will come at the same time not at all there might be some errors two or three errors out of this list may come uh, may play some role at, at a particular time but other time some other errors might be there if uh, these would have been a permanent or a, you know regular errors then these can be corrected so the systematic errors can be corrected easily but non systematic errors it becomes very difficult to correct or varying errors time to time location to location with different geographic areas and different atmospheric condition and then it becomes very difficult to remove those errors nonetheless you know the satellite clock if there is something wrong with the satellite clock and uh, a receiver clock in the, our receiver then the maximum range of errors which can bring in our estimation position estimation is about 2 meter and then uh, this uh, Uh, orbital errors because satellites are after all they are moving objects in space sometimes they drift from their designed orbit and uh, even a minute drift uh, can bring errors of about 2.5 meter plus minus ionospheric delays tropospheric delays these will also introduce ionospheric delays introduce more bring more error which is about plus minus 5 meter but uh, this uh, layer is not uniform throughout the atmosphere or through uh, all along in that envelope of the earth so this varies uh, time to time and place to place but uh, the maximum we can have a plus minus 5 meter and uh, tropospheric delays are uh, relatively very less compared to uh, ionospheric delays but they play some role uh, in the our position estimation and then receiver noise because after all these are electronic devices and uh, there is a signal to noise ratio and all those electro uh, electrical or electronic component they they might create some noise and that uh, noise can bring some errors of 0.3 meter up to maximum 0.3 meter these are just estimates but uh, if uh, your receiver is not of very high quality then these errors uh, can go uh, to a large uh, number like in case of uh, mobiles you know if a mobile is of made from a poor quality electronics then the heating and noise uh, plays a um, larger role but if it is a good quality components though might be expensive but you don't get the heating uh, near the ears and also the uh, less noise is there so similarly with the gps or gnss receivers multi path errors can also come can erupt in our system in our position estimation and maximum that can reach to plus minus 1 meter these are the sum of the errors there might be some other errors which may play some important role 
uh, but not to that uh, this significant as these errors are. The maximum as I have mentioned is the created by the ionospheric delays, so which plays a very major role in these errors. So, let us look at uh, one by one all these errors in detail. Like uh, you know that uh, all these satellites of GNSS systems they are having atomic clocks and uh, which are supposed to be very very accurate, but uh, sometimes they do also drift uh, a small amount. And uh, for example, if a small inaccuracy in a satellite clock results in a significant error in the position calculated by receiver because time, time signal or the signals which are received which are uh, from these GNSS satellites are timed step signals and if the stamp itself is uh, stamping in a wrong time then definitely receiver will give the wrong position estimation. And for example, at uh, 10 nanoseconds delay is there in the or error is there in the atomic clocks which are on board of these uh, satellites GNSS satellites which may result in uh, results in the 3 meters of position error. 3 meters of position error is a huge error in that sense. But generally they uh, the uh, time clocks uh, or atomic clocks on these uh, uh, satellites are kept uh, uh, very much updated and uh, very well maintained their integrity is maintained. Nonetheless, if at all for some time even for some time if that error clock error is there it may result of 3 meter uh, uh, accuracy problem. So, the clock on the satellite is monitored by uh, ground control stations of different uh, operators like for GPS they in US they are having ground control stations for uh, other uh, GNSS systems every system is having their own ground control station. So, they monitor and if there is a drift they uh, perform some corrections and then data is transmitted uh, to the users as well and then uh, these uh, the when they compare the data on the satellite clock and uh, in the ground uh, control systems they too are having more accurate clock. And these more accurate clocks which are there highly accurate clocks their timings is matched with the clocks on the satellites if there is a something and drift change in the satellite clock those corrections are performed. Now, in the downlink data the satellite provides the user with an estimate of its clock offset how much offset is there 10 nanoseconds plus or minus or whatever or 1 nanosecond and this uh, estimate has an and uh, such estimates has an accuracy of about uh, plus minus 2 meters although the accuracy can vary between different GNSS systems. So, it depends how well uh, these uh, different GNSS system like GPS, GLONASS, Baidu or Galileo are or uh, our IRNSS are being maintained. If they are very nicely maintained uh, the clock is getting updated, verified, updated and uh, very quickly, very frequently then uh, errors and uh, these accuracy problem will not come to that large extent. To obtain a more accurate position the GNSS receiver needs to compensate for the clock error. If it is already known then this can be compensated. Now, under again uh, this in satellite clocks uh, we further uh, look into that that the one way of compensating for clock error is to download precise satellite clock information from an space based augmentation system or SBAS. So, because uh, if a country uh, which is having SBAS or geostationary satellite then that clock can also be compared or precise point or PPP service provider. So, by which we can um, compare we can get the error information and then that error information can be used to compensate and the position and a better accurate position can be achieved in case if something goes wrong with the clocks on board of these GNSS satellites. And the precise satellite clock information contains uh, uh, corrections for the clock errors uh, that we are calculated for SBAS or PPC system. And this another way of compensating for clock error is to use differential GNSS or RTK uh, in the receiver configuration which we have already discussed uh, these two different uh, approaches or techniques to improve our position estimation. 
So, there, there also we compensate for errors. Now, uh, next uh, source of error is the orbit errors. If there is a drift of the satellite itself from its design orbit, then what, what kind of errors it will bring. So, uh, GNSS satellites as we know travel in a very precise well known orbits. This is what it is expected. However, like uh, the satellite clock sometimes these orbits, the satellites also drift from their orbit to a very small amount. Orbit do vary for a small amount. And uh, also like satellite clock, a small variation in orbit results in a significant error in the position calculation. So, that, uh, that is a very significant here. And this GNSS ground control system uh, are continuously monitored by, uh, by these ground stations. Uh, so, that uh, if there is any drift in the orbit of a particular satellite, uh, it can be brought back by uh, some uh, space uh, techniques uh, which uh, controller uh, or the ground control station can send those corrections to the satellite and then satellite ephemeris are updated because these ephemeris are downlinked by or they are also received by the uh, user which carries the uh, satellite positions in the space. And even with the corrections from GNSS ground control systems, uh, there are still small errors in orbit that can result up to 2.5 meter of position errors. So, no matter how accurate uh, the, uh, these satellites are orbiting in a designed orbit, but it's still, uh, still some errors uh, can erupt in our position estimation. Uh, further, uh, uh, one way of uh, compensating for satellite orbit uh, errors is to download precise ephemeris information from an SBAS system. So, if one is having SBAS system, lot of problems are solved. The same uh, the problem of clock uh, delay or clock uh, uh, problems or uh, clock errors can also be solved by SBAS system or PP, P service providers and uh, the same way the orbit errors uh, problem can also or these errors can be compensated using SBAS system. And uh, there is another way of compensating for satellite orbit uh, errors is to use differential uh, GNSS or RTK receiver configuration same as in case of clock errors. Now, ionospheric delays. Uh, so, as you know that uh, uh, when we go uh, up in the space from earth towards the space, the first is first layer one has to encounter is the uh, troposphere and then ionosphere. As in the, in the beginning in the summary we have seen that uh, the delays in uh, ionosphere are much larger. Uh, compared to uh, troposphere, but uh, combinedly they can uh, uh, provide and can add the errors into our position estimation. So, their uh, delays have also to be uh, compensated or uh, taken care. So, then ionosphere layer of atmosphere is between 80 to uh, 600 meter above the earth which is uh, the, this layer and, uh, and uh, then you are having this layer uh, basically contains electrical charge particles called ions and these ions delay the satellite signals and can cause a significant amount of position errors. We have already mentioned that even 0.5 meter uh, errors plus minus 0.5 meter it can bring errors in our position estimation. But uh, sometimes it can be more during periods of high anospheric activities because as said that uh, this is not a uniform layer. All the time some ionospheric activity because sun is there and all kinds of uh, reactions and actions are happening within the atmosphere. Then these uh, uh, can bring the changes and therefore, this is not systematic error as mentioned earlier. If it would have been systematic, then it becomes much easier. And the, the, uh, if there are like uh, here, but it has uh, in the ionosphere you are having ions or particles, in the uh, troposphere you are having clouds and they create uh, errors in our data. Ionospheric delays uh, varies with the solar activity as mentioned and uh, time season of the year and, uh, and uh, what is the time of the day also and that is also important and location where it is located whether on the land or whether on the sea, whether on the 
and uh, northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere because uh, the season varies in the, these part of the globe. So therefore, uh, they they have to pass through these layers and uh, can the signals can get delayed and that can add errors to in our position estimations. So this make it uh, very difficult to predict how much ionospheric delay is impacting the calculate uh, position because we do not know uh, it changes so frequently and place to place that it is not a systematic error that can be removed quite easily. But nonetheless, their models have been employed uh, to get uh, a minimum effects of ionospheric delay and uh, this is mentioning uh, just a few seconds back that uh, these varies based on radio frequencies of the signal passing through the ionosphere. So, the, the frequency which is being used uh, for uh, uh, these uh, positions estimations, they different frequency, uh, frequency also behaves differently with these uh, ionospheric or tropospheric layers. So, that is another uh, important component here. Now, GNSS receivers that can receive more than one GN, uh, GNSS signal like uh, L1 and L2 uh, frequencies for example, can use this uh, to their advantage. So, when you are using dual frequency receivers, then these can be compensated uh, the measurements of L1 uh, to L2 can be com uh, compared and then uh, receiver can determine the amount of ionospheric delay and uh, remove the, this error from the calculated position. And a very interesting uh, uh, thing is here that uh, some people are also using these uh, frequency data uh, to map the ionospheric layer because when say uh, you know the delays then you can estimate that uh, what is uh, uh, in the ionosphere or these ions are there. Also uh, some people are using these differential uh, GNSS uh, permanent or base stations and continuously monitoring these ionospheric uh, delays and changes in the uh, ionospheric, ionospheric layer and uh, they have uh, linked with the earthquakes and uh, they, they, they have published that uh, before earthquake events, some earthquake events, large earthquake events, they have seen lot of changes in ionospheric layer as well. So, there are various applications, it is a blessing in disguise, ionospheric delays for position estimations are bad, but for, uh, for uh, mapping ionospheric layer or uh, using them these uh, delay signals uh, for uh, 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 as a earthquake precursor can be very, very useful. For, for receivers that can only track a single GNSS frequency, a single uh, frequency based receivers, ionospheric models are used to reduce ionospheric delay errors. So, dual frequency definitely can compensate, but a single frequency uh, you, uh, receivers uh, may use the, uh, these models uh, to uh, uh, get rid of or minimize these errors due to ionospheric delay. And due to as uh, have been mentioning that due to varying nature of ionospheric delay, models are not as effective as using multiple frequencies at removing ionospheric delay. Because it is though models are there, but uh, it is hard to predict and therefore, uh, maybe in future we will have much more reliable model which will compensate for these errors uh, using a single frequency uh, GNSS receivers. So, ionospheric conditions are very similar within a local area. So, the base station and rover receivers experience very similar delays. This is one assumption if baseline is uh, not very big and therefore, uh, we can utilize uh, these signals in case of differential GPS and uh, that is differential GNSS or RTK systems to compensate for ionospheric delays. Now, let us discuss about uh, another delays which though it is not that big as uh, uh, ionospheric delays. In ionospheric delays, we have talked about plus minus 5 meter uh, errors, whereas in tropo uh, tropospheric delay, we have uh, discussed about 0.5 meter errors and uh, so one tenth of that one, but nonetheless. So, the to uh, it is also a, a layer and uh, but the first layer which is encountered if the signals are going uh, from uh, earth to uh, uh, to satellite, but uh, in real sense they come back to the satellite. But in case of uh, SBAS, uh, these layers have to be 
penetrated uh, both ways anyway. So, in to, uh, toposphere is the layer of atmosphere which is closest to the surface of the earth and uh, there are also like uh, in ionospheric layer there are variations so in troposphere layer and uh, you know the which influences these topo, uh, topospheric delays are influences by humidity uh, temperature and uh, atmospheric pressure in the to, uh, atmo, uh, in the troposphere so these uh, all these the ch uh, temperature changing temperature varying temperature within a, a diurnal cycle or within a day or 24 hour cycle the temperature varies humidity varies atmospheric pressure changes and therefore there are large variations in troposphere as well so since uh, these topospheric conditions are very similar within a local area and therefore if uh, somebody is using the differential then these can be uh, these can be removed uh, quite easily these delays can be compensated and they then uh, uh, these uh, as uh, uh, ionospheric delays can also be compensated uh, same way uh, topospheric delays if uh, differential or rtk systems are employed then these delays can be compensated and now gnss re receivers can also use uh, topospheric models like in case of ionospheric models to estimate the amount of error caused by the topospheric delay but same these models are fixed so but uh, the phenomena is varying so whatever uh, you use uh, you may get uh, better accuracy if you employ the models but not as we one would ex expect now the another uh, source of error is the receiver noise so within the receiver there because of electronic components there might be some noise and which may bring some errors in our position estimation so noise refers to the position errors caused by the gnss receiver uh, hardware and software and uh, this uh, high end uh, gnss receivers tend to have less receiver noise than low, lower cost gnss receiver say almost the same analogy as i have given in case of uh, uh, smart mobiles if uh, very cheap mo smart mobiles one buy then there are chances of errors and noise and as well as heating the same way here if there is a high quality hardware is there and then less noise is expected and uh, of course the if the software is creating some problem this is systematic and uh, if uh, it has been if it can be detected that can be removed that means basically is a bug in the software and uh, then uh, position estimations can be improved now the another uh, source of error is the multipath multipath occurs when a gns signal is reflected off an object so somebody if uh, uh, doing some field survey or going or traveling uh, in a hilly terrain in a valley or uh, uh, in a dense city area where tall buildings are there then this multipath uh, error would be there because of uh, different objects which are present uh, for example a wall of a building or other thing and because of uh, these signals are reflected and uh, they 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 there is a ex extended path which is there and that means uh, wrong position estimation so these reflected signals arrives at the receiver slightly delayed instead of directly uh, signals which are being received by the receiver so this extra added path will definitely bring some errors and these delay signals can cause the receiver to calculate an incorrect uh, position like example is given here that uh, there is a house and if close to the house if receiver is there so one side uh, is not there but the signals can get reflected like this and then can create uh, multipath errors simplest way to reduce uh, such errors that is multipath error is to place uh, gnss if possible and uh, this antenna in a location that is away from reflected surface but sometime it is not possible in a real field scenarios when you have to work in a valley and both sides uh, you are having uh, mountains then uh, uh, i need the position there itself not at the top of the mountain so we have to live with that kind of uh, scenario or in a, a city which is uh, surrounded or having tall buildings can create these multipath errors so when uh, when it is not possible to shift the location of a gnss receiver and antenna the must be uh, they to deal with the multipath error 
one possible error source in GNSS calculation is multipath effect and the GNSS signal can bounce off by nearby structures and the GNSS receiver detects the same signal twice. Sometimes this is also an issue that directly it is receiving the signals and reflected signals are also receiving. Now receiver is confused and that may give you wrong, signal, wrong position estimation. If there are long delays in multipath errors handled by GPS, GNSS receiver while short delays multipath errors are handled by GNSS antenna. So that kind of uh, situation might be there and due to additional technology required to deal with multipath signals, high-end GNSS receivers and antennas tend to be better at rejecting multipath errors. So if uh, the reflected signals are there, the signal quality might be uh, uh, relatively poor, the time is, uh, is added and uh, the receiver itself can reject those signals and they will not introduce errors in the position estimation while if at all it is getting direct signals as well. So um, it compares with direct signals because the satellite ID is the same. If same satellite uh, signals are being received twice, one is direct, one is reflected, then a smart uh, receiver can uh, negate the uh, delayed one and the position estimation can be achieved. So by uh, this, uh, after this having this discussion on errors, uh, we come uh, to end of uh, this discussion. Uh, basically, there are uh, some other errors one should also take care uh, because uh, uh, sometimes you, you are comparing your position estimation which is being received by your GNSS receiver with some map. And uh, if they are not in same sprite or same projection system, then further errors will be there. So one has to be careful that uh, what model or what uh, these spheroid or projection systems are being used by your receiver to display the position estimation. Whether the same and uh, your topo sheets or a map is also having the same spheroid and same projection system or not. If they are two different uh, projection or uh, syst uh, spheroid system, definitely your position estimations are going to be again different or uh, will have errors. So a lot of care is required while uh, uh, doing uh, these, uh, uh, utilizing the position estimation data or doing a accurate uh, field surveys. But in normal day to day uh, car navigation or other things, uh, when we do not require very high accuracy, then one need not to bother about. But for highly accurate surveys or for construction or automated vehicles or in uh, pre uh, precise or precision agriculture practices, there all these cares should be taken so that we get a very highly accurate position estimation. As usual, again I am leaving with a new cartoon just to enjoy. Thank you very much.